Okay, folks, it is Matthew here. We are back. And we are now going to do Criminal Case on Facebook again. And it is now time for me to begin my first of five cases in Innovation Valley. I want to thank these three for helping me out. Frederick, Alberto, and Amanudin. Let's get underway. Smart Money. Matthew, welcome to Innovation Valley, land of high-tech. Here, anything is possible, as long as you're an expert in computer science. We've got an exciting assignment today. Have you heard of Meteor Systems? They're behind many of the devices we use every day. Like this one. Hey there, Matthew. Look at my new tech glasses. With these beauties on, I can browse the internet while talking to you. Isn't that amazing? I'm just so excited we've moved to Innovation Valley. Technology is so advanced here. Expect your mind to be blown away, Matthew. Hannah, I'm sure you'll be a big help in this district, but I'll have Amy tag along for this assignment. We've been asked to supervise a party for Meteor Systems, and I don't trust Frank around booze. Meteor Systems is celebrating the successful takeover of Drone Zone, a promising startup. The party will be held at the Drone Zone office. Matthew, Amy will meet you at the Drone Zone office. Make sure everything goes smoothly. What could go wrong? Oh. Hello, Matthew. Check out this hip office. Andrea told me we were supervising a party to celebrate Meteor Systems buying out Drone Zone. The party should start in a little bit. We could check out the snacks while we wait, while we wait for the guests to arrive. What's that, Matthew? Someone's already here? And they don't look well? Uh-oh, you know the protocol. Let's search the place. I forgot about uh, the burgers, but I'll get that after. Oh no. Ice bucket and Dixon's body. Kinda looks a bit like Yan. Already up to eighteenth. What the was this man stuffed to death with money? How dreadful. Who would kill someone in such a way? Oh my, I almost didn't recognize him without his glasses. The victim is Ernest Turing. He is... was the CEO of Meteor Systems. People call him, called him the King of Tech. He founded Meteor Systems when he was in his 20s and turned it into the world's biggest electronics firm. Maybe whoever stuffed him with money was jealous of his wealth. Let's have a look at the clues. What's that? A drone? You mean one of those devices which flies around in the air? You should try to unlock it. And this ice bucket looks like something Frank would have picked up, but if something's hidden inside, you'll find it. Is that the autopsy button? Anyway, I'm going to grab a whole bunch of stars, but first of all, I got to worry about this. I would have been up to 9,038 energy, but thankfully, I got a lot to be thankful, but thankfully, it didn't really matter. So I'll see you guys back. I'm going to grab a whole bunch of stars, so sit tight. Okay, I've gotten some more stars. I got one extra energy. I'm going to examine the ice bucket first. There we go. It's a 
plane ticket. Nice catch, Matthew, but how did this plane ticket end up in that ice bucket? I wonder whose ticket this is. The details are faded, but I know you'll retrieve them. Maybe I should have looked at the drone first now that I think about it. Mrs. Teresa Turney, first class, last minute. Okay. So the plane ticket you found at the crime scene belongs to a certain Teresa Turing. Turing? You're right. That's the same last name as our victim. She must be his wife. Nicely spotted, Matthew. The ticket was a last minute purchase. That's a strange coincidence. Let's go talk to Teresa. About the death of her husband. I can't believe my husband is dead. This is the worst day of my life. I just can't. Wait, this means I should have someone pick up his convertible from the shop. It's mine now, after all. Your grief is touching. Commissioner Matthew found this last minute play ticket at the crime scene. Were you intending to go alone? Oh, that. It was a spur of the moment thing. My husband said I was spending too much of his money, so I booked myself an expensive flight to show him I'll do whatever I want. Boy, was he mad, but he forgave me. He always did. No one can resist this face and body. That's a bit narcissistic and very suspicious. So you didn't even love your husband? Ha! Love can't buy you dinner. Love won't take you on vacation. You can keep the love. I'll take the money. What a bitch. BNA For Ernest from David Hmm Well done Matthew You unlocked the drone And look It's actually flying Oh Chocolate Whoa What What's happening Rat-tat-tat-tat Ah, it's shooting at us. rat a tat a tat Matthew, take cover. I'll handle this. Bang, bang. Oh, gosh, he shot. Shot the drone. Frank, you saved us. But what? How did you get here? Well, I heard Andrea talking about an assignment at a party. So I thought I'd drop by, see if there was any booze. Anyway, it's lucky I got here when I did, Matthew. What the hell was that flying shooting thing about? It's a drone, and Matthew's right. There's a message on it, for Ernest from David. Someone sent this drone to our victim. Let's text Hannah to see if she can tell us who this David is. Got it. Hannah says the drone was probably sent by David Rosenberg, who found a drone zone. Dave Drone Zone gets bought up by our victim, and that's the gift the precious owner sends him? Frank, you better go back to the station. Matthew, let's go talk to this David. About the dangerous drone he gave to the victim? David Rosenberg, Commissioner Matthew found the drone he sent to Ernest Turing. It almost killed us. Don't fret. The bullets are just rubber. It was a punny gesture. The blades representing cutting the budget since Turing bought out my company. Never mind. The joke's too clever for you. We understand just fine, Mr. Rosenberg, but we don't think it's funny, especially since Turing was found murdered in your former office. Murdered? In the drone zone office? That's terrible. Was there any damage to the building? I spent months decorating it. If I were you, I'd be more worried about being a suspect in a murder investigation. I was joking. It sucks that Turing's dead. I never give him the satisfaction of hearing this, but he was kind of my role model. 
I'd watch him test his gadgets at the nearby park. i say to myself, one day that'll be mine. Anyway, I better get back to my work, Commissioner Matthew. The best minds in Innovation Valley never take breaks. That man is horrible. If he thinks a weaponized drone is funny, he might have thought murdering Turing was hilarious. Good memory, Matthew. He did mention often seeing the victim at the nearby park. Let's go check it out. Next, uh, level up and I'll, uh, see right there, 224. At 225, I will be at the next level. Robot. Security pass. This Ernest Turing's one. Got me another OJ. Right on. Wow, Matthew, you found a robot? That's so cool. Persephone is the name. Okay. Hmm, it looks like it's switched off. I wonder if there's a way to switch it on. Whoa. Hello, my name is Persephone. I am at your service. Whoa, Matthew. It's a talking robot. Oh my, is this thing real? Yes, I am real. Yes, I understand. Oh my god, it can understand us. We're having a conversation with a robot. This is so incredible. If you do not need my services, please return me to my creator, Ernest Turing. Ernest Turing created you? Oh dear. Commissioner Matthew, I think we may need to, to question this robot. Wait, does this mean the robot is a suspect? This is so strange. Sorry, back to the clues. That drone zone security badge you picked up obviously belonged to our victim. His photo was on it. The question is how did this badge end up here? Unless, you're right, the killer must have used it to get out of the office after the murder. And if the killer touched this badge, they may have left this black substance on it. Let's collect a sample. I'm going to grab a whole bunch of stars again. Be right back. Okay, I got me some more stars. Mount to nine. Let's talk to Persephone, the victim's robot. Hello, Commissioner Matthew. Ask me a question. What can I help you with? It's so amazing to be talking to you, Persephone. I can't believe Ernest Turing created a real live robot. I was born, made, a year ago. Ernest Turing is my father, my creator. He is my god. Where is he? I'm sorry to tell you this, but your god was found murdered this morning. This does not compute, Commissioner Matthew. He is dead? He can't be restored, yes. Everything can be restored. Just switch him off, then on again. Human beings are a bit more complicated to restore than electronics. Do you have any idea who would want to kill Turing? Everybody loves Ernest Turing. I love Ernest Turing. This does not compute. But we're not going to get anywhere with her. There we are. Great, you collected the black substance from the victim's security badge. We know the killer must have used this badge to exit the crime scene, which means we better send that substance to the lab. Okay, looks like we'll get three coins. 
How long? Three hours? Okay. We'll get the results in the morning, but we'll see what happens if I decide to stay up late. Which it actually is already pretty late. 1126 p.m. right now. I'll get the remaining stars and I'll see you for that. Alright folks, it's Matthew. I'm going to speed this up. I'm going to let the autopsy run its course though. So I took a look at the black substance Matthew collected from the victim's security badge. It was black ink, the kind used in printing presses. More specifically, the kind used to print comic books. Oh boy. If you were a true Hawaiian, Jan, you'd say, the kind, the kind, the kind, the kind used to print comic books. <laughs> Ink from comic books? You're telling us the killer passed the time reading while our victim was choking to death? Well, I guess I'll have plenty of time to read comic books once Matthew sent them to jail. I'm sorry, I just had to do that. Anyway, I'll see you guys for when the autopsy is run its course. Maybe I'll speed it up early, but, we'll ne but you'll never know. I'm not going to speed it up right now, but for now, I'll see you in a few hours. Okay, folks, it is Matthew here. We are back, and we're now going to get the results of the victim's body. I bet your bottom dollar that your victim wasn't keen on becoming a piggy bank. There's enough money stuffed in him to buy a country. Well, you better not be sneaking any of those bills into your pockets, Roxy. Of course not. Anyway, the victim died from suffocation due to all of the cash blocking his airways. So money really was the murder weapon. I've heard of people paying to have other people killed, but actually using bank bills to do the deed. That's a first. It gets even weirder. I found a strange bruising at various points on the victim's body. It's going to sound silly, but I'm sure the killer exerted pressure on your victim's chakras. Yoga teaches that, and yoga teaches that there are energy points in your body which regulate your mood and health. Okay, so that's weird. And what does that really tell us about the killer? Well, it tells you that your killer practices yoga. The killer practices yoga? Well, it obviously didn't keep their murderous instincts at bay. No, it didn't. What a case, Matthew. I'm still shell-shocked about the fact that we had a conversation with a robot. And the other suspects aren't the kindest people. David Rosenberg's company was bought by our victim, and David thanked him in a decidedly dangerous manner. And Turing's wife was, the only, was only with him for the money. The victim was literally stuffed with bills. Could she have done it? Matthew, turn off all your electronics immediately. The police station servers have been hacked. Someone's planted a virus in our servers. All our files could be lost forever. Whoa. We'll get to chapter two in just a minute. Okay, folks, it's Matthew. We are back. Let's get to chapter two of Pacific Bay Case 46. Matthew, turn off all your electronics immediately. Someone's planted a virus in the station's servers. What do you mean, Hannah? Are our files in danger? Yes, and while I can contain the virus for a little while, if you don't find who's behind it fast, we might as well close up shop. I've tracked the virus to the Meteor System servers. That's where it was launched into the network. Wait, Meteor Systems? Matthew, what are the odds that a virus would be launched from those servers on the exact day their CEO gets murdered? I agree, it cannot be a coincidence. Whoever unleashed this virus must be connected to our victim. Let's go to the Meteor Systems server room.
sorry, watching my local news at the same time. <coughs> Matthew, did you find anything to clue us in on who put out who put out that virus? Surely you don't believe this clunky computer could have something to do with it. It looks like something my grandma would use. Of course, your instincts never fail. Well, the computer is locked, but I'm sure you'll figure out the password. And what are those faint black markings on the circuit board? I'll get your dust and kiss, see if we can make them more visible. I go with my usual, the Dalmatian. Now let's examine the large computer. computer was no match against your skills, Matthew. But what is that message on the screen? It reads, you'll never catch me. Are they talking about the virus, the murder, or something else entirely? There's also a pixelated picture of a man. He must have sent the message. Matthew, you really think you can find this man in our database? I guess if anyone can turn pixels into flesh, it's you. It'll be tough, but I know you'll find out who's hiding behind that pixelated face in our database, Matthew. And then we can ask him what his taunting message was about. Uh, there we go. Oh, A. There we go. Bob Levine, hmm. So the man drawn on the computer screen is a certain Bob Levine. Well done, Math. Well done, Matthew. Let's go ask this Bob what the taunting message he left in Meteor Systems was about. He better have an answer ready. About his taunting message. Mr. Levine, Commissioner Matthew found your computer in the Meteor System server room. Who was that message addressed to? Oh, that message wasn't for you. It was for Turing. Oh, really? Well, I guess Turing really won't catch you since he's just been killed. Turing's dead? I slayed away that virus for nothing then. If I'd known, I'd have finished my comic books instead. What? You're the person who unleashed that virus? You almost brought the police's servers down. Did I? Well, you should thank me for showing you the weakness in your servers, Commissioner Matthew. Most people would pay me for that. Anyway, I was only targeting Meteor Systems. Turing needed to be taught a lesson. That man acted as if programmers are only a commodity when we're the ones who made him so rich. I unleashed that virus so he'd have no choice but to ask programmers for help. That would have taken him down a peg or two. All you managed is to get on the police's bad side, Mr. Levine. Neutralize that virus now or prepare to rot behind bars. Uh, 
Sorry guys, uh, problem there. Help me. Whoa, that was unexpected, Matthew. You revealed the words, help me, on that circuit board from the Meteor System server. Someone's crying out for help. Let's send this board to Hannah so she can figure out who they are. Okay, 12 hours. I may speed it up, but we'll see what happens. So I'm going to get the rest of the stars. So for now, this is Matthew. See you in 12 hours. Okay, folks, this is Matthew. We are back, and we're now going to get the results of the distress message. Matthew, you're lucky the virus hasn't wiped my machines clean. I was able to investigate the circuit board you brought me from the Meteor System server room. Your victim was clearly keen on controlling every aspect of his company because their circuit boards are made here in Innovation Valley. The message was embedded into the board, meaning it can only have been written by the worker who built it. I traced the manufacturing number back to a certain Zhao Li. Great work, Hannah. Let's, Matthew, let's go see why Zhao Li needs help. Stress message. Please, I don't want trouble with police. I work good. I pay bills. I don't want trouble. Miss Lee, Commissioner Matthew just wants to know why you wrote help me on a Meteor System circuit board. Was something wrong? It is no good work. I work day and night, every day with no pay. He said many times, I pay you soon, but no money for Zhao. Who didn't pay you and you worked as a slave? That's horrible. Mr. Turing, he is no good man. He naps in park while I work in basement. But please do not say I am angry with him. He gave me nice yoga mat as a gift, and if I do more and more, he will one day pay me. I don't think you will get paid, Zhao. Mr. Turing has been murdered. I know nothing. Please, I know on trouble. Well, she's not in the running. That poor Zhao Li, she was being worked like a slave. Mr. Turing had no consideration for his workers. In fact, he seems to have been a pretty mean person in general. Sorry, Matthew, I know it's not my place to judge our victim. Whatever he may have done, we must find and arrest his killer. Good idea, we should go back to the park. Zhao's the second person to mention Turing spent a lot of time there. Seven thousand two hundred, not too bad. You've got such a knack for finding clues, Matthew. I bet these broken pieces will be a huge lead once you piece them back together. And an ATM? Are you short on cash? Oh wait, the killer stuffed the victim with bills. You think they're used, they used this ATM to get the money? Then we need to unlock that screen. And there's our victim's name on this bag. Let's have a look inside. I'll grab a few more stars, I'll be right back. Okay, 
Okay, got a couple more stars. I'm going to examine the victim's bag first, and you're going to see why. Because look at right up at the XP side. Just watch what happens. Aha! Company closure. What's that paper you found on the victim's computer bag you picked up at the park? It says company closure. And there is a drone zone logo and our victim's signature. Wait, was our victim about to close drone zone down? But he just bought it from David Rosenberg. You're right, maybe David knew about this. Let's go ask him. Did it? 225. Oh, I guess I don't get the upgrade. David Rosenberg, we know Ernest Turing was planning on closing down your company, and you knew about it too, right? That's why you sent him that drone. I didn't expect a cop to be so smart. You got me, Commissioner Matthew. Yes, I knew Turing intended to shut drone down. Drone zone down. Drone zone was my life's work. I thought Turing wanted to expand it, not shut it down. But why would he buy your company just to close it down? To eliminate competition? Drone Zone was no threat to Meteor Systems. No, I think he was after my drone technology. He bought, he bought the company to get the patents. Anyway, after sending him that drone, I met up with my yoga instructor and let go of my anger. I'm at peace now. And I'm already working on my next startup. It'll be combining two of my passions, computers and comic books. I'm not going to get any chips. I thought I would. Now let's hit the ATM. that ATM from the park even more quickly than I expected. The screen showing a crossed out dollar sign, which means the machine's empty. Maybe that's why it was locked. But this confirms our suspicions. Maybe the killer took the bills they used to choke our victim from this machine, emptying it completely. Let's get this ATM to Hannah. Did you just piece together a robot head? That thing looks grotesque. It seems it was supposed to look like a woman. The blonde hair, blue eyes, smug smile. Wow, good catch there, Matthew. The robot looks like the victim's wife, Teresa Turing. We need to ask her about this. Can you believe it? My jerk of a husband was going to make a robot that looked exactly like me. At first I thought he was doing it because, well, because I'm so beautiful. I thought it was in honor of me. But then he told me it was to replace me. He said the robot wouldn't spend all his money and it would stay young and beautiful without plastic surgery. He said as soon as he was finished with turning the machine into my spitting image, he'd leave me without a penny. How dare he try and throw me to the curb for a piece of metal. You sound really upset, Mrs. Turing. Sometimes people act out when they get as upset as you are. Act out? He's not worth ruining my mascara over. Anyway, I've got a yoga class to get to. It takes work to have this body. If we find out you did kill your husband, Mrs. Turing, you'll have bigger things to worry about than your weight. I'll let the ATM run its course. See you guys for that. Matthew, are back. I'm going to speed this up. 
Matthew, how the heck did you drive this ATM over to the office? Well, we had to use a big wheelbarrow and push it across the city, and please tell us you found something, Hannah. You're in luck. The last person to use this ATM was definitely your killer. The numbers on the bills stuffed in your victim's throat match the bills that were stored in this ATM. They didn't use a credit card to get the money out, though. They overrode the ATM's commands with a complex formula involving a series of zeros and ones. Could you please repeat that in terms I can understand, Hannah? All right, Matthew. Your killer knows binary code through and through. That's the only way they could have broken into the ATM. Well, even if you're looking for a clever killer who knows binary code, they can't outsmart you, Matthew. Can you believe it, Matthew? We, who knew that our victim, who's been idolized as the king of tech, could make so many enemies? David Rosenberg was practically harassing Turing because the victim intended to close down Rosenberg's firm. And Teresa Turing found out she was being replaced by a robot, not the sweetest thing a man could do for his wife. I don't know, Matthew. All of this doesn't compute. This does not compute. This does not compute. Shutting down in three, two, one. What? Oh my goodness sakes. Amy was a robot. Unbelievable. I better get to chapter three soon. Okay, folks, it is Matthew here. We are back, and we're now going to start Chapter 3 of Pacific Bay Case 46, Smart Money. This is the first case in the Innovation Valley District. If you saw at the end of Chapter 2, we just found out that the Amy Young who came back with us was an actual robot. So let's get to Chapter 3. This does not compute. Shutting down in 3, 2, 1. Holy God. Matthew, sorry I'm late. I had to rush off t to... What? What is that? Why? Is that supposed to be me? Why am I headless? Hey guys, what do you think of my Amy bot? Isn't it amazing? I'm thinking of making... You made that horrible thing, Hannah? What is wrong with you? Oh my goodness sakes. Well, pinch me in the... Pitch me on the crotch and call me Steve Irwin. I thought you'd be flattered. It looks exactly like you. My head doesn't literally explode under stress. I can't believe you would do such a thing. It exploded? Sorry, I didn't mean for it to do that. I asked the Meteor Systems guys to customize a robot. Maybe they got some wires crossed. We don't have time for pranks, Hannah. The head of Meteor Systems was murdered, and we need to narrow down the suspect list. I agree, Matthew. We should get back to the Meteor Systems server room. It's our best shot at learning more about our victim. Oh, glasses. Oh, those are the victim's glasses. And the battery.
Okay. Matthew, have you found anything that could lead us to our killer? Let's see if something's hiding among all those supplies. This piece of paper was filed by our victim. Let's retrieve the faded parts. And those glasses look exactly like the ones Turing wore in the pictures. They were missing from the crime scene. Do you think they could be his glasses, Matthew? There's a strange golden substance on them. If you collect a sample, we might get more insight into this case. I'm going to grab a few more stars. I'll be right back. Okay, have the remaining stars. Let's examine the faded paper. Deportation order. Name Zhao Li. Wow. That can't be good. So that paper is a deportation order, and it's filed against Zhao Li. That's the girl we spoke to earlier, the one who was working like a slave for Meteor Systems. Why would our victim want to get rid of someone who was ready to work for no pay? Something's fishy. Let's go talk to Zhao. Uh, the victim was trying to deport her. Zhao Li, we found the, deport the deportation order that Ernest Turing filed against you. Why was he trying to send you away? Mr. Turing, no, I am smart and good worker. I know binary, but I don't work for no money anymore. I research law, and Mr. Turing, no, can work me for no pay. So I tell him, you criminal. But Mr. Turing get angry and he say if I stop working, he make me leave the country. So he threatened to deport you if you were to stop working for him. If I say I work every day for no pay, but if I go, he make me leave Pacific Bay. This is my home. I cannot leave. Now Mr. Turing is dead. I can find better job. I can make money to buy comic books. They help me learn English. No one can make me work for no pay no more. Let's just hope you weren't the one to end Mr. Turing's life, Zhao, or you'll be feeling more trapped than ever before. Well, she's now in the running. Personally, I hope it's not Zhao. Can't imagine an immigrant like her committing murder. But let's get to the victim's glasses. Here we are. Good work collecting that golden substance from the victim's glasses, Matthew. Now quickly, let's get it to the lab. Nine hours. No, nothing yet. Electronic equipment now. There we go. Statue. How did the statue end up under all those wires? It looks like it should be kept on a mantelpiece. Nicely spotted, Matthew. There used to be something written on the base. I'm counting on you to retrieve it. Uh, e. Turing and B. Levine. Hmm. That, the statue found in the server room was a prize awarded to our victim. There's his name on the base. And there's also a certain B. Levine, as in Bob Levine, the programmer who wanted to unleash a virus on Turing's servers. I can't believe this. Bob won an award for best company with our victim. Let's go bust... Let's go bust his chops, Matthew. Winning an award with the victim. Mr. Levine, Commissioner Matthew found this prize you won with our victim. 
How did you go from creating a, comp creating a company together to wanting to destroy Turing's servers with a virus, I wonder? I thought I'd thrown that away. I should have known you'd find it, Commissioner Matthew. Yes, Turing and I built Meteor Systems together. I bet you didn't know that, right? He loved to pretend he did it on his own. Is that why you stopped working with him? I didn't stop, but he turned me into a paper pusher in my own company and threatened to fire me. He just couldn't stand the idea that I was the one who made Meteor Systems a reality. He couldn't even code. I'm the one who created all our technology. But I couldn't leave the company. Young entrepreneurs like that Drone Zone guy already know binary code. They don't need me. So the victim betrayed you and you left penniless, and then winded up stuffed to death with money? So the victim betrayed you and left you penniless, and, let, and then winded up stuffed to death with money? Don't go too far, Mr. Levine. Commissioner Matthew may come to see you again very soon. He's not in the running. He doesn't do yoga. David Rosenberg's in the running. I'll let them go to Liquid Runner's course, and I'll get it in the morning. See you all later. Okay, folks, it is Matthew. We are back, and we're now going to get the results of the Golden Liquid. Matthew, this golden substance you collected from the victim's glasses is one of the most unusual compounds I've ever seen. To keep things simple, this is the equivalent of blood for robots. What? Robots have blood? And it's made of gold? The golden color comes from, from the magnetic materials which are melted into fluids to keep a robot's parts functioning, just like our blood keeps us alive. This is so weird. And that means a robot was the last person to handle the victim's glasses? Good point, Matthew. We know one, one robot who was in close contact with our victim. Persephone. Let's go talk to her. Robot blood on the victim's glasses. Hello again, Persephone. Commissioner Matthew found traces of what we believe to be your blood on the victim's glasses. Yes, that is my blood. I had a malfunction while reading my comic books, but I am fixed. You read comic books? I didn't think robots had hobbies. Hobbies are important to us humans. My creator wanted me to understand humans, so I took up hobbies like yoga. I do not understand yoga, but I try. I see. Anyway, can you explain to Commissioner Matthew how your blood ended up on Turing's glasses? His glasses broke, so I fixed them. I fix things, but I cannot fix my creator. He cannot be repaired. Are you sure that, that you and Turing didn't get into an argument? He had new technology, better than my binary. It would make me obsolete. But how could he make me obsolete? I am his robot and he is my creator. Well, we'd better not find out it, that it was you who made Turing obsolete, or you'll be paying the consequences, robot or not. Now Persephone's in the running. Well, Matthew, Turing was very good at making enemies. He threatened to fire Levine even though they created meteor systems together, leaving the man boiling with hate. And he threatened to deport poor Zhao, who was desperate to stay in Innovation Valley. Despair can make people do crazy things. You're right, now that we know Turing burned so many bridges, we need to move quickly to gather up any last clues. Lead the way back to the Drone Zone office, Matthew. Let's go catch ourselves a killer. Pizza, fishbowl, oh, penguin. Uh oh, there we are, lock device.
What in the world did you pick up, Matthew? I have no idea what this thing is supposed to be. Whatever this is, it appears to be locked. If you can crack the code, we'll have a better shot at understanding what it does. And those pieces you found, let's put them back together quickly. We've got a murder to solve. Ain't no doubt about it. Broken machine. There we are. Looks like a speaker. You pieced the machine back together, but I still don't understand what it is. There's a picture of an eye. Are you supposed to look into it? Oh, you think it's a security device? I see. It scans your eye and opens the door if you have clearance to enter. You're right. This means the killer had to use it to enter the drone zone building. Let's send the scanner to Hannah. Okay. And the lock device. Oh no. RBG, yep. Oh no. E7M. Great work unlocking that, whatever this device whatever this device is. Let's get this to Hannah. She'll know how to operate it. Okay, I'll let these two run their courses, and I'll get the remaining stars now. See you, see you then. Alright folks, it is Matthew. We are back, and we're now going to get the results of the eye scanner. I knew Drone Zone was high tech, but an eye scanner? I've dreamed about getting one for my lab. And I'm dreaming of solving this murder before the killer can skip town. Did the scanner give you any info about them? The scanner keeps a backlog of every individual who uses it, but of course the killer smashed it into pieces, severely damaging the data. However, I managed to treat the back of security log, which keeps records of the eye color scans. And the very last eye scan, right before your victim was killed, was blue. So we're looking for a blue-eyed killer? Well, they'll sure be feeling the blues once Matthew puts them behind bars. So now we know the killer has blue eyes. I'll let the unknown device run its course. See you for that. Okay, folks, it is Matthew here. We are back, and we're now going to get the results of the unknown device. We just found the fourth clue, which indicates that the killer has blue eyes. Let's get the final clue here, the unknown device. This hologram device is the coolest thing, Matthew, and a huge breakthrough in your case. So that's what it was, a hologram device. So, uh, what does the hologram device do, exactly? It's like a projector, recording image and sound, but much cooler. Look, I'll turn it on. Greetings, listeners. This is Ernest Cheering, founder of Meteor Systems. I'm recording this message to express my gratitude for... Matthew, that's our victim. This company couldn't have been... Hello? Is somebody there? What are you doing? No. Ah! And the message gets cut. Matthew, are you thinking what I'm thinking? Turing must have been interrupted by his killer. Too bad they didn't show up on the hologram. We can't see them, but based on the angle of Turing's gaze and his height, I calculated that the killer is 5 feet 6 inches tall. Only 5'6", you say? Well, our killer will feel even smaller once they're behind bars. You've done it again, Matthew. You've collected enough evidence to catch our killer. Someone thought they could get away with killing a tech giant. Someone thought they could get away with killing a tech giant. They'd better think again. They'd be let's, let's go arrest them. Mr. 
issue on my part. It's not Zhao Li. It's not Teresa Turing. I don't think it's David Rosenberg. I'm gonna try Persephone. I hope it's right. Yes! I can't believe it! Matthew, are we actually arresting a robot? Can we even do that? This, this arrest does not compute, Commissioner Matthew. I do not harm people. I fix them. And yet, we know you use your binary skills to break open the ATM and pull out the money you used to kill Turing. I use binary to do good, to solve problems. Problems like the eye scanner in the drone office which recorded your entrance right before the murder? You broke it, but Commissioner Matthew retrieved the color of your eyes anyway. I went to the office to help my creator with his new company. I was his assistant. I helped him. Did you think stuffing his throat with money was helping him? And why did you press on his chakras? Was that some kind of torture? I was just trying to find a standby button. My purpose is to give people what they want most, and that is what I did. My master always said he wanted more money. Always, he wanted more. So I put him in standby, and I filled his circuits with money. But then he would not turn on again. I thought his battery needed time to charge, so I went to wait for him at the park. I just wanted to make my creator happy. I do not understand. You say he is dead, and I do not understand. Maybe you don't, and I can't believe we're going to put handcuffs on a robot, but... Persephone, you're under arrest. A robot on trial? What will we judge next, my toaster oven? So, Persephone, this is a tricky case. I only know how to judge a human being who has flesh and bones, thoughts and feelings. I am made of metal, Your Honor. I do not have the same blood, and I do not sleep. But I know how to love, and I loved Ernest Turing. I know how to think, and I learn. Each day I am learning more and more. I learned that my creator loves money, so I gave him more. I did not know he was self-destruct. Now I know. I have learned. Even so, we can't let you walk around freely, but I don't think we think we can send you to jail either. The inmates would dismantle you to make telephones. And I do not want to order your dismantlement myself. It will feel too much like murder. Well, Persephone, this court is stumped. But because you killed a man and because you may do it again, this court hereby orders, you, orders for you to be turned off until your microchip can be wiped clean. Maybe you could be reprogrammed to play chess. I can never find a good partner. All the good players are dead. So I will live, but I will not remember my creator? I would rather you dismantle me instead. Wow, Matthew, we just put a robot on trial for the first time in history. Who knew this day would come? I still can't believe how advanced technology is around here. Are there more robots like Persephone who can talk and even think? And if there are, what if they go wrong, like Persephone did? Will new laws have to be created for when robots malfunction? I don't know about you, but it's going to take me some time to adapt to this new knowledge. I will look at my telephone the same way again. But there's at least one thing I'm sure of. No robot will ever outsmart you, Matthew. No, they won't. So Persephone was the guilty one. Too bad. Bob Levine was cleared from the beginning. Zhao Li almost made the cut. Teresa Turing was cleared. And David Rosenberg almost made the cut too. So that's it for this chapter. I'll see you for the next. I'll see you for the final one.
for the additional investigation. Okay, folks, it is Matthew. We are back, and we're now going to get to the additional investigation of Into the Future, Part 1. First case in Innovation Valley. And the robot ended up killing the uh, creator. Anyway, here we go. Matthew, something about your last case keeps bugging me. How could a robot commit murder? You see, robots aren't able to override their own programming. And the first basic principle of artificial intelligence is that a robot can never harm a human being. So you're saying that Persephone shouldn't have been able to kill Ernest Turing, and yet she did. Does that mean that other robots in Innovation Valley could kill people? Should we be worried? Good idea, Matthew. If anyone can explain the inner workings of Persephone's mind, it's Bob Levine. He used to be the victim's business partner, after all. Could you also find out why Ernest Turing was so interested in the drone zone technology, Matthew? I find it suspicious, don't you? Alright, we'll check it out. Should we start by searching drone zone or talking to Bob, Matthew? I'll ask Bob first. Bob, Commissioner Matthew was hoping you could help us understand something. We thought it was impossible for a robot to kill a human because of the safety restrictions in their programming. That's correct. A robot is, a robot is forbidden to hurt a human being in any way. So how could Persephone kill Ernest? Shouldn't her programming have kept her from harming him? It's a good question. And I'm also curious as to how it happened. Sadly, Persephone's microchip has been wiped, so we can't ask her. But if you can find the data log which records all our stats, Commissioner Matthew, it might explain what went wrong with her system. It should be around here somewhere. Thank you for your help. Well, Matthew, shall we have a look around the server room? It's our best bet. Persephone's data log might be hidden in this cardboard box, Matthew. Have a look through it, but don't get all tangled up in those, in those wires. Okay. I have, uh, I have all the stars anyway, so I'm good to go anyway, no matter what. A locked tablet. Way to go, Matthew. You found a tablet and all that server stuff. Of course it's locked. For now. Unlocking that tablet, Matthew. And you're right, it's obviously used to track a robot's data. Could it be Persephone's? Good idea, let's have Hannah check this tablet out.
I got to message someone if uh, you were supposed to level up at 225 or go up a ranking because I didn't do that. Oh no, I don't even see the game controller. Oh, it's over on the couch. You think this torn piece of paper you found in the office could help explain why the victim wanted to acquire Drone Zone's technology? You're right. The only way to be sure is to piece this document back together. document back together in no time. I'll never get used to it. The document bears the Meteor Systems logo and some kind of spider robot. And some kind of spider robot? I agree. Let's send this to Hannah. I'll let these two run their courses. I'll see you for that.
I'm looking at something. I'm looking at Sorry, I had to stop, guys. My class had my class had started. Let's examine the faded folder. Last Will and Testament. Let's get it to Hannah so she can get all the details for us. How long? Six hours. All right. I'll let her run its course. See you guys for that. Okay, okay everyone, it's Matthew. We are back, and we're now going to get the results of the victim's will. While not as cool as the other stuff you've been sending me, Matthew, Turing's will is going to make me want to make one lady very happy. A happy lady? Who are you talking about? This will state this will states that Teresa Turing, Ernest Turing's widow, has the sole legal right to act as CEO of Meteor Systems. Teresa Turing at the head of Meteor Systems? That sounds like a disaster waiting to happen. But you're right, Matthew, we should go tell her the news. Well, back to Teresa. Commissioner Matthew, you found my late husband's will. What does it say? How much money do I get? Well, Mrs. Turing, you're now the CEO of Meteor Systems. You're saying my husband left me his job? 
Is, is that some kind of punishment? Is Wait, that means I'm going to get a salary too, right? And people will have to listen to what I say. Yes, I think that's what being a CEO means, Mrs. Turing. This is fantastic. My whole life I've been treated like a brainless bimbo, but now the world will have to take me seriously. What's my first point of business? I'll need a personal assistant, and I'll redecorate Ernest's office. That sounds like an ambitious start, Mrs. Turing. You're right. We'd better go now, Matthew. Please take this as thanks, Commissioner Matthew. It's the least I can do. I don't know about you, Matthew, but I'm not entirely sure that Meteor Systems is in good hands with Teresa Turing as CEO. There's something fishy going on in Innovation Valley, but I can't quite figure out what. And it won't be easy to outsmart all the geniuses around here. But I know you're up to the challenge, Matthew. We'll get to the bottom of the mysterious mach mach machinations in this high-tech wonderland. I know it. Okay. Got a new case to go to. So I'm looking for some reports, and I'll see you guys for case 47.